Today, I'm gonna show you how to replicate the intro to the fun TV show Loki in Procreate Dreams. I'll show you how to work with the different tracks, add keyframes, add audio, until you have a final finished product. I'll also show you how to create the resources you need in either Procreate Dreams or Procreate itself. But if you wanna save a bunch of time, just head over to dreamslearninglab.com where you can download the entire bundle of resources you need for the project. We'll save you a bunch of time, I promise. To start this project, we're going to create a new movie by tapping on the plus sign up here. And I'm going to stick with widescreen and I'm going to choose an empty canvas. But before we get started, I'm going to select a custom duration of 12 seconds. The intro section of the splash logo lasts around 12 seconds where the fonts keep changing. So I'm going to stick with 12 and we're going to go ahead and create a new empty canvas. Like so. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is make the background black to match the theme of that splash screen. Next, we're gonna need some letters. Just remember that this is an animation or a video file, so we're gonna need a lot of letters. I could absolutely create them here in Dreams using the text effect here, but this is gonna be a little bit cumbersome because we have to add all of the effects individually. And honestly, Dreams doesn't have as many of the same effects and they don't work quite as well as Procreate does. So I'll show you how we can create letters in Procreate. Let's get rid of that text layer by undoing. And I've got an example here. So what I did here, I created a layer with a letter and then I used the bloom effect here in the adjustment layers, bloom, to add more of a glow to it, just like that. And you can add as much or as little as you'd like. And then that leaves me with the L with the bloom effect. And then I added a layer of grain on top of that. Again, that's just another adjustment layer here by adding some noise. And that gives me the look of the letters that are in that Loki intro scene. But even this is a little bit cumbersome because I'd actually have to grab this, flatten all these layers, grab this layer carefully, and then drag it back into Dreams and leave it in here like that. But honestly, even this process is a little bit cumbersome. So I went ahead and cheated and I created all the letters in Photoshop because that is way easier. The good news is that I bundled up all of the resources that you're gonna need for this project into a free bundle that you can download by heading over to dreamslearninglab.com. So head on over and you can grab everything. For now, I'm gonna show you how to pull this off when you've got all of those resources in a separate file. But again, you can absolutely create the individual letters here. It's just very time consuming to do that. So what I'm gonna do next is undo my L layer and I'm going to open up Dropbox in the side panel on the screen. So I'm just gonna pull up from the bottom of my screen here and then look for Dropbox. And I'm gonna pull it into a panel here on the right. Now let's shrink down this panel so that's a little bit smaller. I just want it tucked away on the right side of the screen here. And we'll go back here. It doesn't look like it because there are white letters on a white background, but these are all of the letters. And right now, all of the letters are named with the letter D. I promise they'll be named a little bit better for you when you download the packages, but this is just what I did to export them from Photoshop initially. So I'm gonna grab just one of the files and pull it into my movie right here like this. And what it's gonna do is create a brand new track with that letter D on it. And you can see it's got kind of a cool serif D here. Let's pinch out just so that I can see the end of my timeline. Just did an undo. So before we go any further, I'm gonna show you a little trick that's gonna make your life so much easier when pulling these image files into your canvas. When I went through the Loki intro frame by frame, I figured out that they changed the letters every eight frames. And I determined here that if I pull a letter into right around this 17 mark here, it's really tiny, that it will be right around eight frames, close enough for our project. So what I'm gonna do here is instead of doing what I did before, I am just gonna grab a letter and I'm going to pull it until this little red dash hits that 17. So let's delete this right here. And I'm gonna leave my little marker here at the 17, just to, so you can see what we're shooting for. And I'm just gonna pull this right here. Do you see how that little tick mark at the top is moving? If I just hover over the 17 and then let go, it keeps the track size very small. So this is actually how long we need that D to last on screen before it switches to another, another letter. Now I can just grab this, move it over, and I can start grabbing some other ones. So here's two. Just wait till it's right over the 17 and let go. It's like that. See, that's the resizing. Instead, I just want to move it, move it over here. 
and we'll grab number three and you see how they're all different fonts so grab number three here that's number 17 and we'll grab this one and drag it over and we'll keep doing that over and over and over i'm just going to go through let's go through one more let's grab d4 pull it here wait until it hovers over 17 and then let go and now each of these is the same length you see how that's so much easier and now if i play this back put my playhead right here and hit the play you see how it changes basically every third of a second the letter will change you can probably already tell that we're getting close to pulling off this effect we just need a bunch more letters so i'm going to pull over a few more letters just to show you how we'll assemble this project and then we'll switch over to a more completed file so that i can show you how to work with the keyframes and get things really fun and exciting i've already pulled over some d's so let's move up a little bit and i'm going to go back and in this folder you can see all of the letters you need for dreams and loki l-o-k-i again for my tutorial here they're all labeled with the letter d when I actually go to the files. So if I click on R, you can see they still say D, but I'll fix that for you when you download uh, the bundle yourself. So here we'll move over and I'm gonna drag the R's onto another track. But remember again, I wanna pull it over right at the 17. So like that. Now I've got another track starting with the R's. I made it smaller by accident. So we'll go over here on this track. Let's pull over number two. Okay, and you absolutely don't have to go in order here. You can if you want. Oop, keep shrinking the size. You can if you want go anywhere. They're all different, so it can be a lot of fun to play with these. So that is the third one. We'll move that one over. And we'll grab one more. Oh, I tapped on it. Number 18. Lucky number 18. There we go. And now you can see that we have two rows of these letters, but they're both on top of each other. So I need to move the Ds so that they're further on the left. So if I move my canvas up a little bit here, or my timeline, and I'm gonna move my playhead down here right on top of the D, you'll see it gives me a little box to move it over, and I can just very easily move it over here to the left. I'm gonna tap over the next D, move it over here. The next one vanished because it's earlier in the timeline. And the best thing about this intro is that the letters aren't like perfectly lined up. So it's actually great that they move around a little bit as the, uh, as the time progresses. So you can see if I move my little cursor here, let's shrink this down vertically a little bit. It's a three finger gesture down and up to make things bigger and smaller, or we can shrink the timeline by moving left or expand it by moving to the right with three fingers again. Very, very helpful gesture. So we moved over all the D's, let's move over all the R's. Let's go here, maybe move it up, just so that it's not all lined up. This one's here. Now, I realize these are actually using the same font. So it actually, it looks like it matches too much. So what I'm gonna do is jumble these up. Let's move this one here, and let's grab this one, move it to the front, let's line it up. Let's grab the second one, maybe put it at the back, this third one here. I'm just shuffling so that they aren't always the same font next to each other. Okay, see how those are all different now? This is starting to look a lot like the logo, right? It's pretty fun. Okay, I've moved over all the Ds. So let's get the Rs, let's grab this one, put it here. You can even resize them. In some cases, the letters get really small. So we can resize them just by using these handles on the box, the bounding box that shows up. So let's check out where this one is here. Maybe make this one bigger. Now we've got a doctor. Okay, resize and move it around. And this really is just a lot of fun, just picking the stuff up, moving around. That's that's what's really fun about creating this video intro is that you really don't have to be cautious at all. Just have, have fun moving things around, playing with them, make them smaller and bigger, and you'll be satisfying the entire effect of how this one goes. Okay, now we can play. You see how they're both changing together and, uh, and they change size and different positions and stuff. This is so much fun. We'll go back and grab the E for Eames. I don't really know if it's E for Eames. Oh, again, let me just remember to pull it over the 17. Otherwise, it would be way too long and I'll have to resize it. So there's the E. Let's just move it there in the middle. And let's, let's grab some more. Let's grab some more right there. There's another one from like further. And you can see how they're all different fonts. I created dozens of these. I think there's close to 74. So you'll have so many to pick from. 
way more than are actually in that intro video. So you got plenty of flexibility here. Just another one. Let's go with, how about lucky number 46. It'd be cool if I was streaming this, then we could pick these together. Looks like I went a little bit over there. So we'll scrunch it in just a bit. Okay. And then move him over. And if, if I still discover, like I just did, that it's not sized correctly, you can just expand it a little bit and then grab the left edge and extend it out so that it matches the other letters. And now you can probably tell that we have DRE. So just as would before, I would go up here, grab the E, move it over. I really like how that combination worked out. Maybe this one is a little smaller and goes right there. That one, maybe we'd go extra big. Man, I mean, this, is, this is a really fun project. If you want to get eight frames and get the whole thing uh, to around like 10 or 11 seconds, it does take a lot of dragging and dropping. But for now, I hope you get the idea of how this works. If I go back here and hit play, you'll see how it's starting to create that effect from the logo, right? So without boring you through the entire process, I'm going to go back into my dreams kitchen and we'll go back here. And I am going to start with this file, which actually is close to finished. So I'll show you how it works. Actually, I'm going to duplicate it. We'll go to the select up at the top here, select this file and duplicate it so that I still preserve my original. And now I'm going to open my duplicate file and you can see all of the little letters that I created here uh, at the, at the left side, pretty cool and fun, right? And hopefully you can tell it kind of looks like that Loki logo. There's actually, way more variations in this version than that's in that logo. They repeat some of the characters a few times, but I thought it'd be fun to just give you the option to create as many different combos as you want. So all I did at the end here is I grabbed one of the letters. I'll show you an example here. Three fingers swipe up to make it longer. And let's just grab one of these letters and I will copy it and we'll paste it right here. So paste. And then all I did was I took it, maybe zoom in a little bit. And I just grabbed the left, the left side. Sometimes when it's not zoomed in enough, it's hard to grab the edges, but I grabbed the edges and here, extended it, you know, all the way out until it meets here. And then this end all the way out further to the other edge. And that basically extends it for this entire duration here at the end so that the way this works, I'm going to undo two finger taps to undo. Okay. And let's pinch the timeline back in. So you can see I have all of these little squares over here with all of the individual letters. So the logo changes, 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 changes. And then roughly 12 seconds in is when it locks down and freezes on one set. So all you really have to do is just go through this set and pick any one of the letter combinations that you liked. So, I, I was close to picking maybe this one. I think I liked another one in here that looked pretty cool, but I ended up going with this one because I remember from the Loki logo that I believe the O was a black letter O, which I'm kind of partial to. So I thought the E is pretty close to the O and so it'd be fun to use the E here in that black letter shape. So if I start play this from the beginning, here's a cool tip too, you can automatically swipe to the beginning and play just by flicking the playhead over and it will go all the way to the beginning and start playing the track and there we go you can see how this is going to start and then right about here it's going to freeze on that last set so what do we need to do next we need to add just a few effects and this is where keyframes are going to come in so there are really just a few things that we need to add here to make it match the Loki intro. One is we need to add some music. So I'm actually gonna grab my music file and put it in here in a second. Number two is we need to make the logo grow over time. So it needs to look like we're zooming in. And the final thing is we need that fade from black and then fade back into black at the end. So first I'm gonna add the audio file just so that I can close out this Dropbox window from the right side here. So let's go back, back up, and I'm gonna grab this audio file and we'll drag that up onto a new track. It can go above or the bottom. It's an audio track, so it doesn't really matter uh, where you place it. Okay, so let's go up here somewhere. And it is importing the audio track. Now, as I scrub the playhead through the timeline here, it's actually gonna play the audio. So what I'm gonna do is mute it because I don't, I don't want it to play right now. We'll worry about the audio 
afterwards. So I'm going to hide this track and then I can just grab the track and scooch it around. I know roughly where, where I need it to kind of hit at the end of the logo. So I'm just going to put it in right around here for now, because I know that's the rough area. Okay. Finally, we need now to pull off the fade to black and the zoom effect. We can start with either one. Let's start with the zoom effect, just because that's a little bit easier. We can see all of the tracks before we apply that fade to black effect. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to group these layers so that I can just work with them as one entity. So I'm going to, now I can close Dropbox. First, I'm going to select my edit tool and then I'm going to grab all of the items in the layer. Then we'll long press and pick group. I'm going to deselect it and select it again to grab the next layer. Otherwise, it would just gradually build them up together and I want them separated as individual groups first. So let's grab this one and then group. That's the M. Oop, just meant to tab up there. You select and come back again. Over here, long press and group. This one, long press and group. Here we go. Long press group. And then one more. We'll select all of these and then group it. Okay, now I have each of these individual tracks as grouped layers. Now let's think about what I want to do. I want all of them to grow together. So I actually do in this case want all of them as a collective group and you can have individual groups and subgroups. I'm not sure that there's a limit to that. It seemed like from my experimentation and some of the sample files, you can go quite deep with the grouping layers. So you can have fun experimenting with that. For now, I'm going to grab all of these together and now long press and we'll group them all. So now you can see I have all of these dreams letters in individual groups. And now I have all of the subgroups collected into this one master layer here. Next, because I don't need all of the other tracks individually, I'm just going to go up here and start to remove these tracks that I don't need anymore. Delete. Delete. It'll just make it easier for us to kind of see things and, and work with them. All right. Delete that track. So now I have everything on the streams layer and you see, I can now scale this collected group all together, which is what I want. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I know I want my dreams kind of logo splash here to start small and then get bigger. So what I'm going to do is go to the top of the track here, the very beginning, and I'm going to tap on my little clapper icon here at the uh, at the playhead and I'm going to select move and then move and scale. And what that's going to do is drop a little keyframe here on my timeline. And that's telling my project here that at this point in time, you see how there's a little icon here now at the left at this point in time, whatever state I set, I want that to be the state for the project at this point in time. So if I just click here again and scale things down a little bit. You know, that's probably good enough. The, we don't have to go crazy here. And you know, maybe just center it on the screen because we kind of want it to grow from the center out. Then I can, I can start it right here. Now it's just going to shrink everything down until I give it another point to compare to. So I'm saying I want you to be small here, but I want it to grow in size and zoom in all the way until the end of the entire track. So we're going to put our next keyframe all the way at the end here, and then we're going to decide how big we want it to be. So here we go over here, this keyframe, because we're on this layer, we're still in the move and scale keyframe. So now I can tell it, Oh, you gotta be, gotta be quick. So now I can tell that I want it to grow. Let's say, you know, maybe that just so that it, it's clear. Maybe we can move it around a little bit now. If I move my playhead back, do you see how it's shrinking? It's a little bit harder to tell when the individual letters keep changing, but you can obviously tell here at the end, it's shrinking and growing as I move the playhead back and forth. Now take a wild guess how we're going to add the fade to black. So fade in from black and then fade out to black over this. The next step, we're going to use opacity for this entire group. That's going to 
faded in for black because the background is black. And then it's going to, we can add another keyframe at the end to fade it back into black. So what we're going to do again, we're going to all the way to the beginning and we'll go back up to our movie track. That way I can pick on the clapper again and we'll select this time instead of move, we're going to pick a filter and we're going to pick opacity. So let's think about this here. At the very beginning, I want it to be completely black and then I want it to fade in from black, right? So I want the opacity of this layer to be 0%. I don't want to see it at all, right? So I'm going to pull the opacity all the way down and you'll see that everything is black. You can see right through the layer. So now we've got one keyframe here that's at 0%. All right. Now all I need to do is move over right until where I want the letters to begin to show. And I, if I remember right, maybe that's like close to four seconds is good. So let's tap it again. And at this point, we're going to bring it up to 100%. And remember, all I have to do is tap on the opacity layer because I already have a keyframe here that's been created. So at this point, you'll be able to see once I click away that the logo or the intro is growing in size and it's fading in from black. But one thought here, I actually want it to hold on black a little bit at the beginning. So that means I actually don't want this keyframe to be all the way at the left here. I actually want to move it so that it's a little bit closer. I want it see if i keep it here it's going to take four seconds for it to very slowly fade in and maybe i want it to be a little bit a little bit tighter so i'm going to grab this now if i do all i have to do is hold and then i can drag it over so maybe the intro stays stays black and then you know right at this point is when that opacity change happens so as i click play there's a little bit of black to begin with and then it fades in a little bit more quickly. And you can adjust this however you want. I actually feel like that's a little bit too much. So let's grab this one and move it back over a little bit. So let's grab, maybe slide it over there. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, when we wanna fade out, take a guess what we're gonna do next. We're gonna come over here on the right side and pick a point. I think, I don't know, right around 14 seconds is maybe fine. And we'll add another opacity. So we want to hold here at 100% and then start to fade out. So we added another opacity keyframe. And we'll scooch over a little bit and add another one that goes back to zero. Not as hard as you might have thought, right? Not bad. So again, we're starting black here, right? Everything before this is going to be black. And then, so 0% opacity, 100% opacity here, hold 100%, hold 100%, hold 100% till we get to here, and then start dropping it back to zero and we fade out. The entire time, the icon is growing. If we start over again, flick it to the beginning, now the logo both fades in from black and it grows over time. Super easy, right? Not too bad at all. Now let's go in and trim the audio track down to size because you can tell it's quite huge here in the view and I really only need the area roughly the size of my track here or of my movie here. So I know pretty much where I need this one to hit and I remember the point that I need is right around here. So what I'm going to do is grab the audio track and move it until this one is right in view and then we'll zoom back in. Just moving with one finger and zooming with the three finger gesture like this. Okay, so I know I kind of need it to right around here. So let's move the playhead right over here. And I don't know, let's, let's keep more because we can always, we'll, I'll show you how we're gonna address this in a second. We'll keep more than we need. So I'm gonna go here. And now when I click on the clapper, you can see with an audio track, I get different options. I get an opportunity to change the level with keyframes or to cut the track. So I'm going to cut it right here or split it and get rid of this bit on the right that I don't need, delete content. And now because it's already filling up the entire track, I know I don't really need anything on the left side here. So let's move our playhead back here to the left and we'll cut this bit again. So split there and I don't need this bit on the left. So 
I've now trimmed my audio track down the size. And while I'm at it trimming and pruning and cutting things, pruning, that's from Loki. <laughs> uh, let's also clean up some of these other tracks that I don't need. Sorry, I just made myself laugh. Okay, so we're gonna grab this one, delete that track, grab this one, and I'll delete that track. These are tracks that I had in there when I was just playing around with the design before. So I don't need that one. And I don't need this one. Technically, all I really need is the auto track and the group track that we created just a little bit ago. Okay, so let's zoom in. And we know that we want to hit like the impactful part of the music track right when this changes here to this bit that's going to hold, right? This intro logo design that holds for a while. That's where I want the impact to be. So I know that happens right around here, so I'm going to end up pulling this track over to the left. Okay, but let's let's kind of listen in and hear where that happens in the track just so that I know where what part to use. Oh, helps to turn it on. So remember we turn the entire track off by long holding on the track and then hide or show. You can also turn a bit of content on again just by clicking on that little checkbox that shows up in the top left there. Okay, so now you can hear the audio as I move around. So let's just play and hear where that impact hits. I actually think it was right there. Let's go back a little bit. Okay, I caught it. So it's right, it's right around here. So I want that bit of the audio track to line up with that spot that I highlighted before. So let's go back, find that spot, and I'm just gonna remember that part of the track. Okay, I'm gonna hide this because I don't want the audio to keep playing as I scrub around because then you won't be able to hear me talk. And that will be no fun for either of us. <laughs> All right, so that's where it hits, okay, right there, okay. So I'm going to pick up this track and move it until that spot hits right about where my playhead is, just like that. Now if we back up and I turn my audio track on again, we should hear it hit that more impactful spot right where this bit hits. Now you caught there was a little bit at the end there. That's because I clipped part of the track and I saved more than I needed because I know it gets a little quiet, but then picks up again. Same thing is gonna be here. If I start the track over here, it's gonna just all of a sudden start with noise. So what do we wanna do? We wanna mute things at the beginning and then mute them back down again at the end so that it's nice and subtle as it ramps up and then ramps back down again. How are we gonna do that? You probably guessed it. We're gonna use keyframes. So we're gonna jump back to the beginning right there. Now that this is exactly where we want it, I don't need to move anything else around. And I'm gonna add a new keyframe, tapping on the clapper. It sounds like a little ditty, doesn't it? Tapping on the clapper. So we're gonna tap on the clapper there. I'm gonna take the volume down to 0% right there. Okay, and let's you know, maybe let's fade it in gradually. Let's stick with 0% right at the beginning, maybe through a whole second, right? I can see the timeline up here. And we'll stick with 0% there. And then let's gradually increase the volume as it fades in from black, right? And I can see where those keyframes are because I can see them underneath. And this doesn't have to be exact, right? It's not a science at this point. So at this point, let's pull the volume back up to 100. And then let's move on over to the right here. And then maybe as it starts to fade back out to black, like right here. Yeah, maybe that's where we start to lower the volume again. Okay, let's add another one. And we're gonna keep the volume at 100% here, right? Remember, because this is where we want it to hold 100 all through this spot. And then let's just gradually pull the volume back down the, maybe the music should last just like a hair longer than the, the actual video does. So we'll take it down to 0% there. And guess what? I think we've got it. Let's take a look. Let's go back. Maybe we'll turn the audio track on. Let's take a listen and a look. I'm going to turn it on. Let's just flick the play it back to play, play from the beginning.
What do you think? Not bad. If you go back and watch the intro to Loki, you'll see something very similar. If you want to take this to the next level, I did notice a couple of other things that they added to the intro to the actual TV show. And that is a bit of film grain that lives on top of this. And there's a bit of a tint, right? Because Loki's got green superpowers. So there's a bit of a tint towards the green. I honestly tried to add a layer of noise or even a, a noise video layer on top of this. And the blending modes didn't seem to be working quite as well. So I figured I would just leave it clean. But just so that you know, hopefully they'll fix it up uh, in the future so that those things will work. All you would need to do is grab some track with film grain on it add that as a video file or just add a track and pull it in from Dropbox like we did earlier. Once you've got the noise or the film grain track on here, all you would need to do is change the blend mode to overlay your screen or something like that. And that would help it blend in with the layer. I'll show you what I mean here. Any one of these layers, you can click here and change the blend mode. But again, when I tested this with this version of Procreate Dreams, it didn't quite work so well. So if I want to do that, I would probably pull this video into something like Final Cut or another video editing program and just add the layer there where I know it works flawlessly. And I'm sure they'll fix this very soon in the near future. So now let's say we've created our cool track and we want to export it to share it with our friends and family and all of the other awesome people in the world. We just go back to our overview here. And the one that I created here is a duplicate. So I can long press and then share. And then I can share a video file. I can share frames as images that would share each individual frame of this video as an image. So that would be 24 frames per second. It's around 12 seconds. So do the math, it's a lot of frames. I'll post the math here. I, I'm not gonna lie, I just cheated and used a calculator. It's 288 images. So that would be 288 images. There are some programs that can pull those images in and create a video file, but might as well just export the video file from scratch. You can pick export the video file and you can see here it will export the file. And as you just saw, it rendered the video file that we could then save onto our iPad or export it and share it somewhere else. Now, one quick tip related to that video export. If you watched my last Procreate Dreams overview, you know that a lot of the settings for Procreate Dreams live within here. And also within here are the sharing settings. So if you want to specify a specific video format to share your final file in, you can just tap here under advanced export and custom settings and you actually get quite a few options. I was pleasantly surprised when I opened this up just to look around. So you can choose the video format. That's what we just saw a second ago, video or frames. But you can also select the video codec. Within this, you have H.264, HEVC. This gets into very geeky video codec, export, import video watching frame stuff. But anyway, uh, there is also... <laughs> Uh, sorry, I got, was rambling there. Uh, but there's also several ProRes options in here. There's the light version. Honestly, some of these I don't get into a whole lot myself, but just know that you have a lot of different video options. ProRes tends to be like if you're shooting photos with a camera and you shoot in RAW, ProRes is more of a RAW image format. So just know these files will probably be quite large, but will be the highest quality possible. And then you can change the scale, file container, lots of options within here. It's definitely worth an exploring session here, just checking out all of the different preferences because there's more in here than you might expect. So congratulations, you just learned how to create this fun Loki intro theme, totally from scratch and procreate dreams on your iPad. A quick reminder that you can grab all of the resources that I used in this project by heading over to dreamslearninglab.com. I've packaged it all into a bundle that you can download to start working with right now. You can grab that and my free brand new Procreate Dreams handbook with tons of information on how to use the app. If you jumped into this video because you're excited to learn how to make the Loki intro, but you still haven't seen my initial intro video, you can check that one out right up here. A card should be popping up, hopefully. But if you already watched that one and you made it through this one and you're ready for some Procreate fun, please check out this cool, spooky, drippy, droopy design that I created 
It's actually referenced in the first Procreate Dreams video, but you can watch the entire tutorial on how to make the design again right over here. In the meantime, thank you so much again for being here with me today. Keep writing, keep playing, keep animating, and have an absolutely fantastic day. I will see you next time.